Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery related to gravitational waves that you see on the screen. The unusual phenomenon that's formed by a very large collision between two very massive bodies like for example black holes, neutron stars or a black hole and a neutron star as recently discovered. And these unusual phenomena are something that we knew existed theoretically, Einstein predicted them over 100 years ago. But it was only through sheer persistence of several people and through, of course, determination of building these incredibly large machines to detect these um, very unusual events that we were able to finally detect it a few years ago. And today we've been detecting these pretty much regularly, at least once a week. And um, you can discover this by looking into what's known as GRACE database, which I've mentioned in one of the previous videos and also you can find it in the description below. But anyway, that's not really the topic for today. Today we're talking about new research that goes even further into how these gravitational waves might potentially influence, well, our daily lives in a sense. Although, okay, that's maybe going a little bit too far. So first of all, the paper that I'm talking about is right here, also in the description below. And it's called Persistent Gravitational Wave Observables General Framework. Now, if you like papers and if you like math, you can read through it, but I'm going to try to summarize it for you because it is relatively complex. The idea of the paper is actually pretty simple. The um, paper suggests that these gravitational waves created by these tremendously catastrophic events don't just kind of happen once and disappear. They might influence the um, actual space-time around us, thus affecting, well, basically matter. In other words, um, what they're suggesting is that these gravitational waves leave a kind of a memory of the event, um, and obviously because there's so many of them, over time this can really add up and create a completely different environment um, based on the actual peaks of gravitational waves. All right, so this already might sound complicated, so let's basically start from scratch. So first of all, I remember um, when I just read about the detection of gravitational waves, um, it was actually funny to hear a lot of people talk about, you know, well, so what, how does it influence our daily lives? Or essentially talking about how it was literally useless and completely pointless research that spent millions of dollars. What they didn't realize is, first of all, the history of how we got to study these waves, and second of all, that it actually does have a lot of implications. But um, what I really wanted to mention is really how we got to the point of being able to study these waves. It really all started with a single person who was super determined. This wonderful professor from Caltech right here, Barry Berish, who almost single-handedly was able to convince the entire scientific community to put the money into research and to create LIGO detector. His story is actually absolutely incredible and what he did deserves a separate video one day, but um, in essence, if it wasn't for him, we would not be able to have LIGO or ever detect uh, the gravitational waves to begin with. And because of this, um, even though he technically didn't really discover the gravitational waves, he eventually became um, a laureate for Nobel Prize, and even though someone else was supposed to win this prize, that particular person unfortunately passed away, and so the Nobel Prize was given to uh, Barry Berge along with two other scientists. And so thanks to him, we have this very large, and actually two of these very large LIGO detectors that are responsible for detecting the waves. LIGO detector in itself is a tremendously complex and actually mind-blowing machine and Veritasium a few years ago um, went to LIGO detector and made a really cool video about it and you can actually learn more about how mind-blowing this research is by checking out his video on YouTube. But I think my main point here is that uh, just creating this machine was already a huge process that involved a lot and a lot of things. But now we're able to detect these waves and we've confirmed their existence. What's next? Well, it seems that just having these waves pass through us is not really as simple as a wave coming and a wave going. It seems that the actual wave as it passes through us does influence and change things a little bit. And this paper discusses this in a lot of details and provides at least three different ways of trying to detect these permanent changes. One of those permanent changes they suggest might be um, detected by looking at the shifts in mirrors of the LIGO detector that could actually uh, be well, literally shifted in time because every time the wave passes, it nudges the atoms of the mirror a little bit. And what this implies is that every single time a gravitational wave passes through us, through our planet, through our space-time, 
it actually changes things in different locations slightly differently. What this might imply is that, well, um, two different people in two different locations will actually have time uh, shifted a little bit, which will be a very minuscule, but because there are so many of these waves passing, it might uh, become quite significant over time because of the amount of waves or because of the larger waves coming once in a while. So, for example, um, if there is a collision between much larger supermassive black holes or even intermediate sized black holes like the two right here, the um, gravitation wave from these two objects will be so significant that it could shift things around quite dramatically. And um, a lot of them might influence space-time to the point where the positions of particles around us and the positions of particles inside your body will actually shift and change. So these changes will be um, detectable and significant. And not only that, but they'll be persistent. They'll actually stay with us over time. So in other words, a single gravitational wave can literally shift things, kind of like a typical water wave in a sense. So after a single wave passes, it might leave the region where it passes altered. So in some sense, think of it as water waves um, hitting the rocks and eventually changing the shapes of rocks. So maybe it's not as dramatic as water and rocks, but it's still significant enough that we need to study this. So for example, things like time itself will definitely be affected. Uh, so time might actually um, act differently in the different location of the wave as it passes. And at the same time, depending on how powerful the wave is, it might literally shift atoms around and change their position in space, thus affecting the actual object. Now, unfortunately, right now, we don't really have any means of detecting these permanent changes, but one of the best ways is to, after a few years, take a look at the position of mirrors in the LIGO detector. If these mirrors have shifted by an observable amount, it means that this paper is totally and absolutely correct in assuming that these changes are permanent. We could also take a look at various atomic clock, like the one you see on the screen, and um, try to measure the differences in times of atomic clocks around the planet to see if a typical gravitational wave changes the time on, in those clocks, because that's kind of what the paper implies. In other words, the time for a person in one location will have passed differently from time of another person in a different location. And this obviously has some implications. And although a typical um, gravitational wave will pass pretty quickly and will have relatively small effect due to well, the distances involved here, because these black holes usually are located at like billions of light years away from us, um, if a much larger collision occurs, like for example between two supermassive black holes, the actual energy released and the actual wave produced will be so large and so significant that I don't want to say that it might have catastrophic effects, but you never know. And that's, this is actually why we need to study these. For all we know, maybe these waves, these ridiculously large gravitational waves, have such a dramatic effect that it could cause something significant to our planet. So we do need to study this, we need to understand this, and we need to learn more about how these permanent changes affect our planet. So even though technically this research might seem a little bit useless to some people, it's really not, because it's allowing us to understand the universe in ways we never thought was imaginable. It allows us to see how these gravitational changes occur and how they affect the actual matter and obviously us living in the space-time. So anyway, on that note, until we learn more about gravitational waves and until this research is either proven correct or proven wrong, I'm going to stop this here because it's very theoretical for now. But the assumption is, um, well, it's important. It's actually something that might potentially create a completely new uh, field of study where we'll, we're going to start learning about space-time in very different ways. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.